Welcome to the first in a new series of videos that's going to go through step by step how we're going to connect the APM into a plane. And what I'm going to actually do is connect an APM Mini 3.1 with external compass and PS to a Hobby King Texumo flying wing. Now my Texumo flying wing I've had for a little while, it's um, been beat up, uh, but it's the perfect chassis for us to pop in the APM in between the receiver and the control surfaces and speed controller. So that's what we're going to do in this series of videos. If you're interested in multi-rotors and APM, I already had two video series on the channel. One covers APM 2.5, 2.6 and 2.7. And there's a more recent one that takes this exact same board, the APM Mini 3.1, through connecting it on a multicopter. So in this series of videos, we're going to start very simply. And in this one, we'll install the firmware. We'll do the basic setup and wire it into the receiver using CPPM for this one as something slightly different from what we've done before. Then we'll also have a quick look at how we're going to connect the uh, compass and GPS up, so we're using the external one because we're going to want that compass out on the wing away from all the rest of the electronics for interference purposes. And then once we've done all that, we'll finish the calibration off and then in the next video, we'll finish the power system, connect all the servos and then do the initial uh, settings to make sure that all the servos and everything are working in the right way and it's all calibrated properly. Everything we're going to go through in this video and video series is documented fantastically well here at plane.rdpilot.com. And if you go through instructions, you can go through step by step and it will actually walk you through pretty much everything we're going to do. So if there's something that I'm talking about that you want to know more about, uh, if I remember, I'll link back to where it is on these pages, but it's usually pretty easy to find. So things like um, tuning, we're going to talk about, we'll talk about flight modes a little bit in this series, we'll talk about how we're going to load the firmware, do the configuration, um, some of the basic parameters and other bits and pieces too. Before I go any further, I need to have a big shout out to a, a very generous chap. Um, I initially asked my subscribers when I had the APM 3.1 before Christmas, I just had one board, and there was an option to either put it onto a quad or a wing. And um, if I just scroll down quickly, there's a gentleman called Rod, the Roger X3, which is this chap here, who very, very kindly offered to send me another APM 3.1 board, which is the one we're using in this video series, that allowed me to do both. So I have to stop here and just say a very, very big thank you to the Roger RX3 for sending me this. It's thanks to him that uh, we can do both series together. So thanks again, Roger. I really do appreciate it. So first of all, we need to install Mission Planner. Now Mission Planner is the piece of software that we're going to plug um, the board into. And uh, the way you get Mission Planner is quite straightforward. You go into Download and you, and you click on Mission Planner. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you'll actually have the download on here. Mission Planner is the piece of software that we're going to use all the way through this video series. It's the one that we use to initially configure the firmware and upload it onto the board, then to make sure and test that everything's working, as well as do all the calibration routines for things like the GPS, the accelerometers, and the compass. So first thing before you go any further is download and install that. There are different versions for uh, Macs, PCs, and other bits and bobs. So once you've got Mission Planner on your PC, then we're ready for the next step. So here's Mission Planner running on my trusty netbook and I'll open in the bottom left hand corner a view onto the board as it's sat by the side. Now I've connected the board to the PC using a USB cable. It's the kind of micro USB lead at the end that you use to charge things like Kindles and Samsung tablets. So if you have that kind of cable kicking around, you have what you need. Now I've installed it in um, the PC, it took a couple of minutes to install the drivers. Drivers were done automatically Automatically. This is a Windows 7 machine, but it's the same Windows 7, Windows 8, and um, it's appeared as COM25, the Arduino Mega 20. 
5560, COM25. We want it as 115200. We're going to go into Initial Setup. And we're going to click on Install Firmware. Now it'll go to the internet, it'll get the firmware list that's current. And here's all the things that we can install um, the APM into. Everything from ground-based vehicles to antenna trackers, through planes, helicopters, and every type of multi-rotor that you can shake a stick at. This time, of course, we're going to go for Arduplane version 3.2. So I click on Arduplane, it says, are you sure you want to upload Arduplane? And we click yes. Now it goes and detects the board version, starts downloading the HETS file from the internet. Once it's done that, it'll compile and start uploading the firmware. Now this is going to take a while. Once the upload is done, it'll then try and read back to verify that the firmware is okay and that can take quite a few minutes so while it's doing that I'll uh, just fast forward through this bit and then I'll start talking when we've got about a minute to go to explain some more about this interface so we've almost finished it's taken quite a while so the whole process is probably the best part of 10 to 12 minutes so don't worry if it is taking uh, a bit of time it's completely normal the stuff that takes the time is what it's doing now which is verifying the firmware now the interface that we're looking at here mission planner if you've watched any of my other APM videos uh, it'd be something you're quite familiar with if this is the first time looking at mission planner or you've uh, not used it a lot in the past let me give you a very quick tour. Flight data and flight plan is what you use to actually um, put missions together so that you can fly the craft. Initial setup is where we're going to spend the time setting the board up when you do your first bits and pieces. Then config and tuning is where you can change the way that is the board behaves. Now, it's finally done. It should now reboot. As you can see on the video, we've got all the lights flashing now. This is looking very promising. And once it's done all this, then we should be able to connect to it and try and configure things. Right. COM25, 115200. Now it appears to have booted. We have the green light lit. We have the red light lit. Let's click on connect and see what we can see. So what happens now is the board and the PC start talking to each other over something called Mavlink which is coming down the USB cable and all the parameters that are on the board that dictate the way it behaves are streaming down into Mission Planner so that we can see them. Now we've done that we should be able to see on the left hand side a lot of additional information and we're going to go through the mandatory hardware first. So now we have a connection to the board we have a list of mandatory hardware that we have to go through before we go any further. Um, accelerometer calibration, compass, radio calibration, flight modes and failsafe. We will be going through each of these with the exception of failsafe because I'm going to do a separate video on how you set that up so that it works perfectly. First one is the accelerometer calibration. Now normally in this, if you're putting it in a quad, there are some very complicated procedures to go through to make sure that it's all working. In this one with a plane, we have two options. The first allows you to put it in all three axes to calibrate. The second is putting it completely flat and clicking on complete once. Now, that only gives you one axis. Next one is going to be to calibrate the compass. So we're going to have to connect the board to the external compass for that to work. Then we have radio calibration, which again, we're going to have to connect it to the uh, receiver. And here is the um, how we're going to connect every, everything up with the channel reversing. So we might come back into this to make sure that the servos are operating correctly. Then there's the different flight modes that we'll set up. And there'll be a later video to explain what each of the flight modes available are when you're running the um, plane. And the last one then is failsafe, which I said we'll actually look at in a separate video. And that's going to be so when the um, radio has a problem, it'll fly back home. So to start with compass and the other pieces, we're going to have to make some cables up. So let's stop there. And first of all, let's talk about how we're going to connect the receiver to the APM. 
So before we actually start making up the cables, let's have a quick talk about what you need to have done before we start putting the APM on the plane itself. Now here is a brief outline of my flying wing. So the way it's set up at the moment has a very simple uh, six channel receiver in the middle with the aileron channel going to the left hand servo looking from the top and the elevator channel going to the right hand servo. This is a model that's been flown numerous times, it's been trimmed and center of gravity is perfect. So you always have to make sure that if you're going to put the APM on a model that you've already flown it, it's trimmed and set up great. Trying to add an APM to a plane that hasn't been flown manually and configured and trimmed manually is quite tricky. So we only have to connect a couple of the channels up. The information about what you connect where is actually in um, the plane.ardupilot.com site. It's in instructions, first time setup assembly. And in here it talks about connecting your RC gear. It's mainly geared around APM 2.5, 2.6. So it actually goes through what the inputs are and I'll put a slide up in a sec to show you what the 3.1 versions of that are. But excitingly, further on down, it actually shows you what your RC outputs are as well. So you can see here for the outputs, um, which you're connecting to 1, 2, 3, and 4. So aileron is 1 on here, the um, elevator is 2, the rudder is 4, and the ESC is 3. So it makes it very easy to connect. Now we're going to actually follow in a minute the wing setup or VTEL setup which is where we have um, Elevon 1 and 2. So we are going to plug what's currently in the aileron channel into the second input and the Elevon channel 1 which is the elevator channel right now into the first pin on the APM. So that's pretty straightforward. So we just have to make up an, an output cable that has three um, connections and because there's only uh, three connections on the way in we're actually going to make an input cable that has four so that will give us throttle, elevator, aileron and will also give us one so we can change the mode as it's flying. Right okay so the first thing then we need to look at is what the pinouts are at the bottom of the APM 3.1 for the inputs and here it is. So what we'll do is I'll keep this on the screen and we'll show you the actual board itself um, show you how we can put this together and the options for making the cable up. So looking at the diagram and you can see the reason why the diagram has those uh, colors of wires because they absolutely match the outputs from the bottom of the APM. So just so you're clear the USB cable is on the right hand side. There's a small arrow that points to the front of the board. This is the back which is where all the connections are. So I'm only going to have to make up a couple of wires here. One for aileron, one for elevator, one for throttle and one for aux one mode. So I'm going to have to use the brown cable, the light lilac cable and I'm also going to have to use the blue cable for throttle and the green cable for auxiliary one. Might be slightly different on yours. Obviously I'm going to have to use the plus five volts and ground so that um, we can power the receiver from the outputs on the APM. Now there are a couple of options for us to make the cable up. Let's just talk about those briefly. First of all, I could actually um, just get some uh, servo leads like this, cut the servo leads off and strip the wires back so that I could solder these ends onto the wires that I need so I can plug them into the receiver. That's one way of doing it. Not great in my opinion, just because having solder in the middle of any connection um, is liable to stress and eventually fracture over time. It just, uh, with all the vibrations on any RC model, it's not brilliant. So that's not my preferred method, but it is one way to do it. The second way you can do it is actually use these things, which are Arduino headers. Um, you can get them in the sockets and also the pins. Now these are great because what you can actually do is cut um, the headers off so that they, they, they look like servo connections and these fit beautifully into the receiver and then you've got the pins that you can then solder the wires to again. Last way which is the way I'm going to do it is actually I'm going to crimp the pins onto uh, the wires here. It provides the best electrical connection 
So let me get on with doing that and then we'll come back and look at the wiring loom I've created for the receiver and then the next thing's going to be GPS. Now in this example, we're using standard servo connections here. We're not using CPPM. If you're lucky enough to have one of the later receivers uh, that I'm using from Hobby King, one of the outputs is marked as CPPM. And CPPM is basically all of the channels out of one pin. Now that's great and it makes the wiring a lot easier. So if you want to wire that up, just follow this wiring diagram. So you have to connect pins two and three together and then pins one go into the um, CPPM out on the receiver with the plus and minus to power it and you're good to go. So here we have the cables all made up. So uh, just to follow it on the screen, you can see that the brown one uh, is labelled a for aileron. The next one, which is the purpley grey, is labelled E for elevator. The next one, which is the blue, is actually the throttle cable uh, marked with a T. That one I've both plugged in the signal and also the positive and negative, so that will provide the power for the receiver. And then the last two, the first one is the green, which I've labelled one which will be my auxiliary one mode switch. And then the very last one is going to the gear channel. That's my auxiliary seven. So there we have the first of the cables made up. We can now plug that into the receiver on the model when we're ready. So we can power it. We've got the two channels for the wing and we've also got two channels for setting the modes, but also as a separate auxiliary for if we want to do anything else. Now, the other thing we need to remember here, of course, is that I'm only connecting up two of the channels because it's a wing. If you were going to be connecting a um, model that has elevator, aileron, rudder, as well as throttle, obviously you would connect all of the channels, including the two, the, the rudder that I haven't got here up to the model. So. Next thing we need to do then, is we need to build the loom for the GPS. And again, this time the APM 3.1 requires a little bit of effort to get the GPS working. Here's the one that I've got to go with this APM 3.1, and it's actually designed to work with an APM 2.6. So there are two outputs on the bottom. One of the leads goes to the onboard GPS, the other one goes to the external compass. So we have to do a little bit of work. So if we imagine that we're looking um, at these two boards in diagram form, and here's the diagram, then you can see that to connect to the GPS, we've got a little bit of cabling to do. Ground to ground, plus five volts to plus five volts, and then the transmit to the receive and vice versa. That will allow us to work with the external GPS. Once we've done that, then uh, we'll come back and we'll make the last couple of pins, which is the SDA and SCL, ready to plug into the external compass. But to make that work, there's a little modification that we need to do to this GPS board before we get there. So let me quickly make this cable up and we'll come back and I'll show you the modification to get the compass working too. So here's the cable made up as per the diagram. So we have the four wires on the right hand side and we have the six wires on the left. Now, the SDA and SCL lines are going to plug into this port here at the top of the um, GPS. And I've also had to make another slight adjustment. So let's zoom in and I'll tell you what I've done here. To make the compass work is because this external compass is designed for use with APM 2.6, the main GPS unit runs on plus five volts and the off-site compass, the 5883L that's on uh, this board as well, is expecting 3.3 volts. So to make the compass work, because we don't have a 3.3 volts out of the APM 3.1, you have to put this little link in. And this little link, uh, you just need to scrape off the protective covering of that single line in the middle of the board, and with a very fine tipped soldering iron, connect it to the bottom pin of the external GPS and compass module. That will supply the 3.3 volts to the 5883L, which is your external compass. And with SDA and SCL connected, that will go into the board. The only other thing you have to do 
is right here in the top right hand corner of the 3.1 there's a little jumper called jp1 you have to break the little connection with a little knife um, or uh, the tip of a screwdriver because once that's broken that then means the APM uses the external compass. So that's quite a lot of work however you can now start to get the external um, GPS and compass modules that are all ready to go and have all the right pinouts so you don't have to do this but if you've got one of these kits where the external GPS compass is more for the APM 2.6 that's how we make it work with 3.1. So thank you for bearing with the video so far, and this one's been a bit of a long one. The next one should be slightly shorter, but by the end of the next video, you should have your APM installed on your plane and flying. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and happy flying.